is everything about what Ineos stands for. It's why I love the business, because it's like, well, why can't we? Cool to get in a car that you've designed and built, I have to say it. The most serious conversation was in the Grenadier pub, yeah, uh, on the corner of the pub with a, a gentleman called Chris Settlewright and a, another gin and tonic. We were sat in the pub, and because we're in the pub, memory's a little bit hazy. <laughs> but I seem to remember uh, the conversation turning to the fact that JLR were discontinuing the Defender model. Today, the Land Rover Defender rolled off the production line one last time. It was a great shame that we we're going to lose this part of our heritage, so I think Jim wanted to, to resurrect it. It was a vehicle which I always used when I was in Africa. It's not the most reliable, but um, it was certainly the most capable and comfortable. There is that statistic, isn't there? 70% of all the Land Rovers that were ever made are still going. Business, you know, he's been creating, um, and in fact, I think didn't he call himself creative director <laughs> in one of the books? I think it's great, and it, absolutely, you know, he is extremely creative. It'll pull a plow, it'll clear a minefield, you can drive up to Buckingham Palace. It's about as classless as you can get. No frills, uncompromising, off-road, four by four. I seen one and it instantly caught my eye. Yeah, they're fun. They're new to the US, so it's definitely a fun. Oh, you match with it too. How yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, look at us. Yeah, we, we in tune. We in tune. <laughs> blue team right here. Be honest. Would you would this be something? 
tell them that you would drive? I would, honestly. Yeah? I love the look of it. I like the old, the old school feel it has, you know? All right, there you go. That's, that's <laughs> one review right yeah. there. <laughs> So after checking out the utility version, you can instantly feel the ingenuity and the durability in this vehicle. From the outside to the inside, it gives you a luxurious feel, but at the same time, you feel like you're ready to be off the grid, which I think, you know, in hindsight, that, that was the blueprint, that was the plan. I think they nailed it. At times, it gave you like a G-Wagon feel, but then when you would step back and look at it, it gave you that Land Rover essence and i think that's what is dope because it's kind of like a crossover kind of um, between the both i love the dual roof even the fact that you can open them up that was fire i think the biggest deal breaker and the biggest obstacle right now for this company is that it's not ev and since we're in that transitional phase right now where like uh, a lot of car companies are converting to ev so I'm eager to see how they make this transition because as far as the design of the car and the durability aspect, I feel like they nailed it. But since we're in that phase where they're phasing out gas, I think a lot of people are going to be hesitant to pull the trigger for the gas vehicles. So we're just kind of like waiting to see. Yeah. yeah so I mean, it's the BMW B58 engine. Bye. Same one they use like in the Toyota Supra and everything. So okay. It's pretty reliable. <laughs> But they, they sat at a bar uh, to make a fleet of, like that he was to make a fleet of cars for him and his adventures. And uh, they sat at a bar called Grandier. And uh, once they realized that they wanted to make a brand out of everything, they asked them if they could use their name. And uh, the Grenadier in the army is somebody who shoots a grenade at the enemy. Or, you know, a grenade at the, you know, wherever they're shooting at. So this is basically the, 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 the grenade at the enemy. So here I am test driving a vehicle. In my honest opinion, the ride was smooth, but I thought it was going to be a little bit faster. It is a heavy vehicle, so I understand that. So I do feel once it becomes EV, those are the changes you're going to see instantly. Challenging. Morning. Welcome to the cow sheds <laughs> R&D center. It's <laughs> amazing, <laughs> amazing. Oh, he's done a great job. And we've done all this in about... But you should get some weeks. of your other cars in here and get them photographed when it's all empty, just because oh, the yeah. light's amazing on the yeah. yeah. yeah, But it's partly iconic because of what it's done, I suppose, yeah, as well exactly. as what it looks yeah. like. Yeah. They always look better when they come with a bit of shit. Yeah, yeah. I've got a lot more shit. We'd <laughs> asked a, a couple of kind of established car design studios to, to come and get involved. So they'd all gone through this loop a number of times with, with other vehicles. In a way, it's got, to be, it's got to almost look like a car that hasn't had a designer anywhere near it. You know what I mean? You know, if you look at the chamfers on the side, why have we done that? I think on, on the front end, clearly because of the, the amount. The Your answer is going to be because it's a design thing. It's not a functional thing, is it? That is miles away from anything that I would get even close to. Launch, I wouldn't. No. It wasn't going to be the, here's a check, just design something and we'll go and build it. It was going to, always going to be a, a way more involved process. I have absolutely no doubt that the Grenadier has given Jim a few sleepless nights because he's a human being. 